Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Welcome back to our weekend of 3D models. Today, what we are going to do is look at the Fantasy Games and Game Dev Assets Bundle going on for Unity developers right now. But what we're going to do is focus on the 3D model packs that are available in each. And why these are kind of important is because you can use them in whatever engine you want. Now, if you're using them in Unity, they work a whole lot better. Uh, but at this price, at $25 US, you can get a ton of content for Unity, Unreal, Godot, whatever game engine you happen to be choosing, even your own, so long as you can support the FBX format. And today what we are going to be looking at are, uh, let's see, this asset, this asset, this asset, this asset, a um, little bit of this asset, sort of this asset, this asset, this asset, and finally this asset. So there's quite a bit for us to cover. By the way, I did a video yesterday, so this is a weekend of models. I did the uh, FPS games and game dev assets bundle. Kind of took a look through what was included in it. I also showed you how you can use those assets in Unreal Engine 5 as well as Godot 3. So if you want to check that one out, I will have that linked down below. So what we're going to do is jump in right now. There's also a bit of a cautionary tale here about how not... I mean... Let me get rid of full screen. How not to release your Unity asset. And this is one of the assets. This is the Dark Fantasy Gigantic Environment asset. And you may notice something right away. And if you are a Unity developer, you're probably pretty used to this. Especially if you live in a world uh, with the um, HDRP, the Universal Render Pipeline, as well as the built-in pipeline. You kind of run into problems on occasion. And any asset you buy, including the Dark Fantasy asset, you're going to want to check for documentation. And there's a PDF here that tells you how to set up this asset. And we're going to look at one later on that has a different approach, and that approach is wrong. All right, so if you want to fix this one, it's pretty simple. Just go into assets, uh, go into the materials, go to the materials, select every material, and just switch the shader from shader error to standard. That's it. That's all it really takes to fix. There's a couple of other things you can do to fix this one as well. Like you can change the color coding and so on. But as you can see, it's not a really hard fix. And if you're not using the built-in pipeline, you won't have to do that at all. So here we are taking a look at the uh, asset now that it is... Uh it is fixed in our world. You can see here, it is a modular setup for creating, um, you know, gothic, uh, medieval castles. Uh, these guys don't have good housekeeping or anything going on. But you can see, kind of got interior environments and exterior environments. Everything you see to make these setups, you've got, um, you know, houses here with staircases, hearths, fireplaces. Uh, you've got dry stores, barrels of things, and so on and so forth. If you come back over here, Dark Fantasy, and you go to the demo, you'll find actually there's a showroom of the prefabs that are available. So let's go check out the prefabs here. It uh, gives you an idea of all the assets that are available. By the way, um, if you do pick up this pack, the same pack here, let me just go back one, uh, you'll find there's also a tool in here called Octave 3D. Uh, it's a set of tools for Unity that make working with these kind of modular assets a lot nicer for snapping things together and building uh, your levels out of them. But as you can see, it's basically like a Lego kit for building medieval levels. Definitely a useful thing. Um, so that, that is the Dark Fantasy Pack. Once again, if you are using the built-in pipeline, you have to redefine the shader type. Nothing really difficult there, unlike the one we are going to look at later on. And by the way, we got some, uh, some dark horror stuff going on here as well. So, yeah. So that is everything you need to create uh, levels using uh, lots and lots and lots of skeletons. I've always kind of wondered with these setups, too. Why don't the bones fall because of gravity? Why would a skeleton stay together? It has never made sense to me, but... I guess this is a trope as old as horror movies go, so... Or maybe you can explain to me how they stay together uh, with no connective tissue. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next asset now, and that is the Dark Fantasy Adventure Environment. Or, the sorry, the Fantasy Adventure Environment. This is actually not dark. This is the exact opposite. Now, the only downside to this particular, um, this particular asset is that um, you uh, have more trouble meshing the art style of this one than you will in the other assets. So here we're going to look at all the assets in it. it it's more of a kind of a different art style, uh, a little bit brighter, happier, and so on. So there are some of the assets in it. Uh, like so. Let's go check a different one. Here are some more assets in it. Let me just get out of the world so you can actually see what I'm dealing with. So like so. Uh, let's go check the demo out. And we've got a number of rocks as well. So this one is a bit of an, a you know, a brighter art style because um, most of the rest of the meshes are, are kind of more on the dark side and are, um, what's the word I'm trying to look for? More more on the realistic. This is a little bit more bright and cheery. 
Uh, so it's going to make it a bit more difficult to mesh this style in with the other assets in this pack for the most part. Uh, but a pretty straightforward asset on the whole. Um, you can see more of the assets that are in it. Now, some of this definitely could be uh, brought in. Uh, so we've got, uh, you know, rocks and such to work with. And yeah, so that is the uh, dark, sorry, sorry, not the dark, the fantasy adventure environment. Next up, we're going to get to probably my favorite here. And that is the weapon pack. That's under Triforge Assets, Medieval Assets right here. Let's go open up the demo scene. And ta-da. So this first one is a little bit on the artistic style. And I'm random. Uh, where are you? All right, here we go. So there are the assets over here. And let's go check them out. Bum, 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 bum. So here we have a room containing all of the various different assets. So what you see here is a number of shields and weapons and so on. And let's go look at it in grid view because it's kind of more of a here they are approach. So here we go. You got a number of different shields. What really impressed me with this asset pack, first off, is the quality. So you see here, most of your medieval weapons that you're going to want are here. So you've got everything from um, daggers and, and hand axes to battle axes. Uh, but what I love is this guy knows his weapons. So, for example, this here is a felchion. This here is a sax. This is a long sword, various different long swords or Viking swords. Uh, and then we've got a uh, hand and a half or two-handed swords here. A Y-hander available right there. And what is this guy right here? What kind of sword is this? Well, technically, this is not a sword. This is a knife. This is called a messer. Um, and by the way, what makes it a knife? Blade on one side. And uh, there's one other aspect to that because technically a falchion uh, would be a knife too and it's not. Uh, so you see here you've got Warhammer's picks. Uh, and then he actually knows his polearm names well. So we've got actual, so here's a spear. Uh, we've got uh, bardishes. We've got uh, goose arms. We've got various different polearms available here. And if you look at them up close, the quality is quite nice. So there's some intricate detailing in the metalwork and so on. Again, I really like this asset pack, and it's just kind of one of those, if you're making a medieval-style game, you are going to need weapons. And I just, I like the amount of detail that he's put into them, the texturing work. So if you look here, like little grooving, the texturing on it looks solid. So it's a really nice collection of weapons, and it's a broad, broad variety. So we got bill hooks, we've got a number of different maces, halberds, uh, and so on and so forth. We've got a partisan, a volge, and you name it. So there's some really nice stuff in this pack. Next up, we're going to move on to the big castle kit. Obviously, you can see how these things fit together. Now, the nice thing with this pack is because there is a common theme, pretty much all of these assets are useful, which is, you know, well, as long as you're working in that particular theme. So let's open up, let's open up the sunset scene. And bum, bum, bum. so this one is uh, all the kits you need to make a castle. You could mix it and match it with the other one, which is a little bit more gray. This one's a little bit more earthy and stony style castle. But you could see the kind of results that you could work with. So you've got, you know, heavy doors. You've got uh, houses inside. Again, you've got all the sundries that you would populate inside of a house, like cots and so on. Um, yeah. So pretty straightforward on the whole what you're getting here. Everything you need to create and populate a castle. Uh, between this and the uh, dark fantasy gigantic environment, you can pretty much populate a fantasy world. Uh, pretty straightforward. Let's go check out the showcase. So we got the showcase. Yeah, well, showcase A. Here are all the bits that go together. Once again, uh, check out that video on Octave if you want to see a tool on making this stuff work. But you can see here, you're getting a number of assets. And they're all like virtual Lego kits. So you basically put all of these together to create environments so you got like the roof trellises and then you got the uh the shingling that goes on top and everything just kind of slots together like lego uh, let's go check out the other showcase and here you can see it's sort of a more of a side cut of the environment that you get so here is all of the stuff that you can create um definitely an interesting pack uh and, and kind of you get what you expect out of this. The other nice thing, and I haven't really showcased it with all this, but especially if you are working in Unity, everything is prefab. So building stuff, it's just literally about as simple as it gets. You literally just drag and drop things into the world. And then if you use Octave 3D, it makes placing things and snapping them together and, and placing things relative to other things super, super simple. So that is the uh, Medieval Houses modular kit. And now we're kind of coming to the end of the... Uh, the assets in the pack in terms of models. So I think we covered everything I was talking about. Um, you've got, let's see, the dark fantasy environment, the fantasy environment, the weapons, the castle kit. Uh, the, 
Oh, no, we haven't got the RPG Fantasy Pack. Let's go check that one out. Now, this one is useful if you actually want to populate your world with some characters. So it's a collection of character packs, and you get a couple more weapons here as well. So you see here, uh, you have barbarians, you have some kind of fey uh, enemies, you've got a giant bipedal bear, you got some uh, kind of gruff-looking dude, uh, some more humans, got an orc of some form, another human here, uh, a werewolf, it appears... Just a number of different creatures available. Uh, they're all uh, rigged. I don't know if this demo actually showcases their capabilities. I'm going to check that. Uh, but they do have a number of different animations available. So as you can see here, here's the idle animations going on. I think they run through their gamut of animations in this demo. So if you need to populate your world, well, this gives you a starting point. Now, the challenge is going to be meshing this art style to your own art style is always kind of the most interesting when you start getting into characters. When you're talking about environments, it's super simple because, quite frankly, they're trying to model based off the real world. But when it comes to characters, this is where you're going to have to mesh in your art style. But even just for prototyping, this gives you a set of fully functional characters that are, again, all available as prefabs, fully rigged, fully animated, so you can literally just start dropping them into your, into your world. So if you want to create the dwarf character, boom, drop him in. You want to mount a weapon, you've got weapons to go with it, and so on. So uh, this is definitely a nice pack if you need some fully animated and rigged characters for your medieval game. Uh, the next one up we are going to showcase is one more environment pack, and then I'm going to show you uh, what not to do. So the last one we've got, oh no, we've got two more. The Dark Fantasy and the Medieval House. These are straightforward modeling packs. Let's go take a quick look at each. Now, first up, we have the uh, Modular Fantasy Pack. Now, you're going to notice something going on here, and that is that these assets are not textured. Now, that's actually just a side effect of the project I'm using to demonstrate. What you're seeing here, uh, everything I've done so far is using the built-in pipeline, and these assets are not actually compatible with the built-in pipeline. Now, they're still polygonal assets, so you could go ahead and retexture them if you wished. All the materials are there. Everything you need to work with is there. Just if we head on over to the uh, page for them, you're going to notice under the rendered pipeline, compatibility, they are not compatible with the built-in pipeline. So these assets are only usable in the URP and the HDRP pipelines. Welcome to the fragmentation of modern Unity. Uh, as you can see, in the built-in pipeline, I, I just remapped the shaders to the standard shader, so all the textures broke. If you wanted to retexture everything, you could do so. Just to be aware, the modular house pack uh, as you see here, it is a number of different houses available, but this mostly overlaps with what you get in the other kits anyways. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could definitely work from this, or if you're using the URP or the HDRP, you're not going to care. Uh, next up, we have the other, the other aspect, though. This is the Dark Fantasy Pack, uh, and this one, uh, I think I mentioned it, or I, or I kind of showed it earlier on, so let's go ahead and show the lineup. So... And here you're going to see all of the assets in the world, including apparently four <laughs> broken textures. I swear, when you use Unity, you're going to come to dread this, this purple-pink texture of the missing thing. But you're seeing all you need to create environments here as well. So another set, kind of like a dark temple environment. Uh, all the modular pieces go together. So you could use these, obviously, uh, with the other packs. Uh, the art style is close uh, together. And everything you need to create another environment is available in this particular pack. Uh, things to populate the world, some, um, kits and so on. And if you want, there are some demo scenes that actually showcase the usage. So, for example, this one shows an interior environment. So you can see how you could use this for the interiors uh, for you know, certain setups, well, the other ones could be used to create the exteriors and so on. I find the art quality of this particular pack to be a little bit lower resolution uh, than in the other ones we showcase. So I'm not sure uh, how much of this particular pack you would end up using. Uh, but as you saw from the overview, that is what the contents of this one are. There's one other pack in here that doesn't really fit with everything we're talking about, but there's also the Fantasy Sounds Bundle. I thought I would mention it briefly. Um, it is this guy right here, the Fantasy Sounds Bundle. And if you're going to create a fantasy game, you're probably going to want sounds to go with it. And this actually contains seven packs worth of content. So I figured I would mention it quickly. So here you can see the Sounds Bundle, the sounds that are available in there. So you got ambient sounds, crafting sounds, interface sounds, magic sounds, combat sounds, monsters, whooshes, and so on. So if you need to have combat and you need to, say, create the sound of an arrow flying. I guess I really didn't need to play it over there. I could play it using their built-in player. Where is the play button, though? Hmm. I know I'm looking right at it. I know you can preview it. Oh, there it is. So 
There's, and here's a, a shield whooshing. Oh no, shield wood. So there's the sound of hitting a shield. How about weapons? There you go. So it's a number of different packs. You got, again, monster sounds, sounds of growling and so on, a variety of whooshing noises. You've got sounds for magical spells, so cast a fireball type spell, and so on. So there's this huge pack of sound. Plus, you've also got a bonus music pack in there. Uh, you got a bunch of ambient sounds. So if you're in a cave, the noises a cave would make, and so on. So if you need to have uh, audio going on, check out that Fantasy Sounds bundle. It's, it's part of this, obviously, and it's pretty big. So now we're going to get into the fun... Oh, okay, there's another Unity bug that causes it so you can't minimize things all the... Oh, there we go. Now we can. Um, the, the last one is an object lesson in how not to do things. So we're going to head on back over here, and we're going to check it out. And there's some warning signs when you look at the name. First off, I think that's supposed to be Sorceress... And, and if you're going to mangle the title without spell checking, it just shows a certain aspect of laziness. But the reason why I'm focusing on this guy is for a multitude of reasons. First off, you know, the assets actually might be quite nice. Now, if you head on over to their page, they look good. Uh, they've implemented their own skin shaders. The author has a number of these across the uh, the environment. It's a fully animated rigged. It's even got jiggle physics if that's your thing. Uh, there's a skin shader in place. It's a really detailed character. Um... But there's some problems here, and, and they're big problems. So I'm going to imp I was going to import this into my project. The problem is, it'll break my project. Yes. So if you import this one in, so a warning up front, uh, it brings in the HDRP dependencies, even if you're using the URP or the um, built-in render pipeline. So it will break your project. You'll have to remove all that stuff manually. And then on top of that, it doesn't work out of the box with the HDRP if you're using a version of Unity beyond 2019. And in order to get around that, and here's where it starts getting really silly. So here we go in terms of the solution here. So if you're using Unity 2020 or higher, you need to get an updated shader. And there's a video on how to update the shader. So that part is definitely nice. Uh, the problem being, in order to get this file, you have to go onto his Discord server, ask for it, you get a, you download a file, which is then password protected, which you have to get from him, uh, and then it gives you an updated set of shaders that work with modern version of Unity. Why don't you include that in the package? This is ludicrous. And then on top of that, uh, we get into uh, his support. His support is uh, amazing. So let's go into some of these reviews here. And you're going to see, so this is what happens. If you import the stuff in, it will break the pipeline, period. So you need the updated shaders, which, by the way, are only available via private download. But you have to go onto his Discord server to get a password to unlock, which is insane. Buddy, don't do that. If you've got to have an external link, fine. But just include this, include this in the asset, period. Done. Um, and then, yeah, so this is the thing. This, this is just nuts. But then we get, again, more comments on how you have to get it. And look at his feedback here. I see you get it free with Humble, Humble Bundle. Be honest and don't be rude, bro. All right. If you're doing customer support, uh, first off, even if you got it for free with Humble Bundle, it's not free. We bought the bundle. You are selling it. You put it in the bundle. Support it like you have any other asset. So this really rubbed me the wrong way. And then we come down here and we have another review uh, of somebody. Where is it? Is it on the next page? Okay, I thought it was on this page. So let's go to the next page. And if you are using the Universal Render Pipeline, this patch will ask you to import HDRP into your project. I joined the Discord and asked the author to provide a separate URP package similar to what other asset sellers do. And the author went on a tirade about shitty mobile games uh, and then said, people like me are scum or something like that. And I got kicked and banned from Discord. So, yeah. Yeah, apparently if you're making a, a URP game, you're scum. And I wouldn't necessarily immediately give credence to somebody's uh, review like this. It, it sounds like a one-off. Uh, but as we saw from the earlier review it, and how he responded to um, the guy that says needing the password is kind of insane, which, by the way, it is kind of insane, uh, that response was just bad. So I got to say straight out, I'm not going to review this asset. Uh, this asset, it, it kind of got me 
on the laziness of the title to start with. You know what? Like, I get ESL. Some people have, uh, some people are not English. 100%, I get it. The majority of people on the internet are actually not English speakers. But for the title of your product, you can do a little bit of effort to make sure that you've got it right. So that's kind of gets you off on the wrong shirt, on, sorry, on the wrong foot. But then to see that you need to actually, to get these assets to work, which by the way, state right here that they work in the HDRP, the URP, and then let's be lazy again, the standard shade. Um, yeah, that you have to go and get a zip protected, password protected file to make these products even work in a version of Unity released in the last three years. It doesn't work in the URP. It breaks the built in pipeline if you import them because it brings in HDRP dependencies. There's all kinds of things wrong with this particular asset, which is a shame because the asset itself looks really nice. And if you're willing to jump through these hoops, you've got another animated character available to you. But this one, this one is disappointing to me. And I figured I would point it out specifically. And if you are creating a Unity asset, do not put part of it behind a password protected file that you have to download off someone's Discord server. That is just insane. And I have to say, Unity, if anyone from Unity is listening, you've got to ban this practice. This, this should not be something that is allowed on the asset store. Someone should not be able to sell a broken asset with the fix behind a separate... So it, it's just... It's a bad user experience. It reflects bad on everybody. So yeah, that is Furious 2 and Archer. Uh, a very disappointing asset in an amazing bundle. So don't let that turn you off. You're still getting a heck of a lot of content in this bundle. And we haven't even got into the things that I've actually reviewed uh, already. So you've got assets like Odin Bakery, RPG Builder, uh, and Octave 3D and Node Canvas. I did reviews on every single one of those things if you want to learn more about them. But today we focused on the 3D model kits. Um, these are things, again, that can be used in uh, any engine you want. By the way, the licensing does state that is the fact. Mind you, I'm not your lawyer, so I am not responsible for advice I gave you. Just do be aware of that. So there's some really nice stuff in here. These characters are very nice. A bunch of environment setups, all very modular in nature. Uh, and then again, this exceptional weapons pack, things that you're going to need uh, if you are creating a fantasy environment and hopefully something that you found useful. So that is it. That is it for the hands-on component of the models. I am going to be coming back and doing uh, a couple more on um, this guy. So I'm going to still be looking at the ultimate FPS um, the probably the shooter template and the AI stuff. I keep getting requests for that. So I'll look at some of the plugins for the sci-fi kit. I have mostly covered all, all of the fantasy stuff at this point in time, but there we just went through all of the models. And again, there's also that giant sound pack available uh, right here as well. There's another sound pack as well, uh, but it's more for ambient sounds. And as you can see by the price, it's a lot smaller. It's only 20 minutes of sound. Uh, but if you are looking for sounds for a fantasy style game, you are well covered in this bundle. These two bundles are amazing, I gotta say. So that's why you've seen so much coverage of it. And that ends Model Weekend. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.